Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. When talking about late Byzantine armour and weapons, an element of speculation must be employed. This is due to a lack of archaeological finds, sparsity of military sources, and the Byzantines' own extensive use of foreign mercenaries. It is difficult to say what equipment is truly Byzantine. An Italian sword might well have been used by the Eastern Romans just as much as the Italians. As such, a description of the armour and equipment of the late Byzantine army will be imperfect. However, the following is considered to be as accurate as possible. Starting with body armour, Byzantine soldiers from 1261 to 1453 wore a poor point, which was padded quilt armour worn on the top of their metal armour. Beneath the surcoat was a habergeon, or male shirt. These chainmail shirts could come in two different variants. There was a short sleeve type. The male on this would cover the shoulder and stretch down to the waist. The longer male coat would provide arm protection that reached to the waist and continued down the body to the knee. These longer variants could have male mittens attached to them. Long chain coats could also have a coif attached for head protection. Short chain shirts did not have coifs. However, both short male shirts and long chain coats could come in a variety of shapes and sizes. It was not the case that exclusively short-sleeved male shirts only extended to the waist, nor vice versa. Some of these male shirts could be quite dark in colour. It is likely that metal armour may have been coated in something to give it this hue. Late Byzantines could also wear a cuirass on top of, or instead of, a hauberk. These cuirasses were made of metal, or toughened leather and lamella, with Turco-Mongolic influences. The Byzantines no longer used scale or older types of lamella armour made of iron or bronze. Although they may have worn these types of armour for ceremonies, but not in battle. To protect the neck, soldiers wore an iron plate or leather neck guard or gorge. This was a typical Balkan armour fashion. Under the hauberk was the leather curie. If it was used, then it was likely placed between the hauberk and the gambeson. This armament is not attested in Byzantine sources, however. The gambeson was a padded cloth garment worn under the hauberk to provide additional protection and padding and separate the skin from the male or lamella. Thus a late Byzantine soldier's standard body armour would be a cloth gambeson, then on top of that might be a leather curie, then on top of that was the iron hauberk or lamella armour, and placed on top of that was the padded paw point. The paw point would also help prevent the wearer burning themselves on their own armour as it heated up in the hot sun. Byzantine soldiers are also depicted with capes. For headgear, a late Byzantine soldier wore a type of kettle hat, or chapelle de fur, sometimes known as the war hat. This particular iron helm was conical, sometimes onion-shaped, or round and tall. It had a brim that was wide, either flat or sloped downward, and surrounded the entire circumference of the helmet. This Byzantine kettle hat was made in either a single piece, of a single seam, or in two pieces, riveted to a central cone. Sometimes it had male avantails attached to it and could be worn on top of a male coif. These coifs were universally worn in addition to a helmet and not on their own. The frequency of this helmet in late Byzantine art and others such as Russian and Serbian suggests that this was a very common, perhaps even standard issue, type of helmet. When the Byzantines did not wear the Byzantine kettle hat, they wore conical helmets, without brims, built from one piece or two pieces of metal, similarly constructed to the kettle hat. These helms could have decorative accessories added on. Mark Bartusis suggests that this may be a Spanish influence from the Catalan company. These helmets could also have a neck guard that extended from the back of the head to the shoulders. 
Byzantine helmets did not have nose guards. Horse barding was made of the same metal or leather lamella armour which was equally eastern in its inspiration. To protect the lower half of the body, late Byzantine soldiers wore chasseurs or male stockings. It was thus possible for a late Byzantine soldier to wear mail from head to foot. Theodor Paleologus of Montferrat mentions greaves and cuisses, or padded thigh or knee armour. Byzantine soldiers wore trousers and boots. Alternatively to boots, they would wear shoes with cloth puttees. Presumably, when they wore male chasseurs, they would wear trousers as well, or some sort of undergarment underneath. Most of the armour just mentioned would be worn by heavy troops, such as heavy infantry, cavalry and crossbowmen. Light infantry, such as bowmen, slingers and levy spearmen, only wore what they had and could afford, which might stretch to a helmet and perhaps even a gambeson, but little else. This rule of thumb does have exceptions because archers are depicted in Byzantine art in full armour. However, these may be Pranoia soldiers which could afford this equipment. A peasant levy from Thrace, Macedonia or Anatolia probably could not. Late Byzantine shields were triangular in shape. The dimensions of these shields were typically 3 to 5 feet in length and about 2 feet at its widest point. These shields were curved along its width. Its sides could be straight or slightly convex. The point of the shield would protect the leg, especially for a horseman, and the top would protect the body. The shield could be carried on its bearer's back by being attached to a baldric when not in use. This type of shield first appeared in the mid-12th century in the Byzantine Empire, possibly introduced by Manuel I, influenced by the West. These long triangular shields were a development of the type of kite shields used in the 11th century by armies such as the Normans. A great example can be seen in the Bayer Tapestry, which explains why it is called the Norman Shield. Unlike the rounded Norman Shield, the Byzantine Kite Shield had a flat top, was made of planks of wood. The edges were bound with iron and faced with animal hide. They could not be faced with iron as it would be too heavy. Small two feet wide round shields could also be used, but these were not very common. When they were used, they were likely used by infantry or light cavalry. For the navy, metal shields were employed by the Byzantines, but these were not the large kite shields because they would have been impractical in naval warfare. In terms of equipment, the late Byzantine soldier would have to carry their arms and armour, a water bottle, food, their ammunition if they were a skirmisher, spare clothes such as trousers, boots, shirts, etc, and any personal effects. Their spare equipment would be stored in camp before going into battle. The late Byzantine army also made use of horns and drums as musical instruments. Unfortunately, that is pretty much it when it comes to the late Byzantine armour and equipment. For late Byzantine weapons, please follow a link to my video below. I have been your host Daniel Maynard, and this has been Eastern Roman History.